The patient should be sitting with their legs hanging over the bed with the pillow on their lap and should make an effort to slouch forward as much as possible. This will open up the lumbar vertebrae. Next identify the iliac crests. This should mark the L4 or L4-5 level. Then identify the midline by palpating the vertebral processes. The L3-4 space is the one to go for. Remember the spinal cord ends at L1. If you go in at the L3-4 interspace, you will meet only the cord requiner, which will push out of the way of your needle. You can temporarily mark this, for example by indenting the skin as shown here. Apply skin preparation. This is 0.5% chlorhexidine and alcohol, but use whatever your local policy states. Once you're ready to start, scrub up and put on sterile gloves and gown. Transparent adherent drapes with an aperture in the middle, like this one, are ideal for making a sterile surgical field. It can be secured to the shoulders. Make sure the position is right. Ask the patient to slouch and push the lower back out towards you. You need to make sure you've assembled your equipment before you scrub. You need a few mils of local anaesthetic, such as lidocaine, drawn up in a syringe with a 23G needle mounted on it. You're going to use that to infiltrate the skin. The spinal needle consists of an introducer and the actual spinal needle that will enter the subarachnoid space. The spinal needle needs to be delicate so it causes minimal harm, therefore it's not well suited for advancing through the often tough intervertebral tissues. It could snap or just be difficult to direct. Therefore you first use an introducer to do the heavy work. The spinal needle has a stylet in it, which is just a fine wire essentially which blocks the lumen so the needle doesn't get blocked with bits of fat. Lastly you need a 5ml syringe with whatever agent you're planning to inject into the subarachnoid space. In the case of anaesthesia, this is usually a long-acting local anaesthetic. Confirm the level you're targeting using your previously made mark. Raise a small wheel of local anaesthetic under the skin. Then turn the needle in the direction of the interspinous space, aspirate to check you haven't entered a vessel, and infiltrate in this direction whilst withdrawing. Note that the resistance to infiltrating the local is slightly higher in the midline. This means you're in the right place. Take the introducer and pass it through the skin, aiming slightly towards the head. Make sure that you're absolutely in the midline. Slowly advance it. If you hit bone, withdraw it a centimetre and reinsert at a slightly different angle. With the introducer in place, advance the spinal needle with the stylet in place. It may take a few goes to get the right angle. Once you think you're in the right place, remove the stylet and wait. You know you're in the right place when you see drops or clear CSF dripping through the needle. Take your syringe full of local and use it to aspirate a milliliter or so of CSF just to confirm that you're still in the right place. Confirm again that you have the correct medication for the correct patient and that you have excluded any allergies. You should rest your hand against the patient's back to maintain stability. Then slowly inject your drug, which in this case is bupivacaine, to give spinal anaesthesia. Once the injection is complete, withdraw your needles and press on the puncture site.